So hello everyone and welcome to today's session. So today we will cover this core lab. It's uh, advanced Android in Kotlin 5.3. And I will share the link in chat. So before actually starting with the core lab, so if you are already following the previous sessions, you can see that uh, you have already familiarity with the existing core labs. If you see here, 5.1 testing basics. Second one is the dependency injection and test doubles. And now we are at this point, gonna continue with this testing proteins and Jetpack integrations. Okay, so just I will close my video. Okay. So in this core lab, uh, we will test a couple of things related to the Android application in general. We will see how we're gonna test the coroutines, how we can test the room database, and how we can test the data bindings. Most of you might not uh, familiar with the with the data binding, but we will see according to time, we can directly switch to end-to-end -end testing if we don't get that much time to test your data bindings. So what you should already know that I already discussed, we need to be uh, familiar with the 5.1 and 5.2. You know the basic concepts of what is view model, live data, data binding and navigation component and you have the application architecture that we are going to start today like working on the code base the sample code is following the guide to app architecture which is provided by google and android fundamentals code labs so all the links are in the code lab so if you want feel free to check those and then we you also know the concept of coroutines like how they work and what is view model scope and how we can scope or coroutines or any kind of uh, process or task to the view model scope so quickly i can share a little bit about view model scope it's basically a it's kind of a scoping some process or some task to the view model so that until your view model is is active you you don't need to be worried about it like a clearing the services or canceling any api calls once whenever your view model scope is get destroyed or cleared the all the relevant stuff related to that view model scope will also get cleared so in this code lab we will see run blocking you might have heard of this one already run blocking we can also use in a production code sometimes but it's not a, uh, like the recommended approach and then the, there is a, a specific version for testing, which is run blocking test. And we will see what are the differences and why we should uh, consider run blocking test over run blocking. Then there is a testing a test coroutine dispatcher, then how we can pause the dispatcher and how we can resume the dispatcher. Because if you see the coroutines, they are basically a synchronous behavior. We, we don't know like at what time we are going to expect the output or the function gonna return us a result. For example, if you are calling any API service in your application. And then we, we will see how we're gonna use the in-memory database builder, which is if you are if you are familiar with the room database, like if your application is having a, a room database and you need to test that part of your application, you can use the in-memory database builder for that. So what you will do, these are the couple of things we will uh, we will modify the code base whatever the provided by the developer team and then we will see how we're gonna have the test how we're gonna use run blocking test and pose resume dispatchers and coroutine dispatchers uh, test coroutine dispatchers so the first step is the app review app overview so this is the app it's a note taking app 
So you, either you can download the zip from this link or you can clone this repository and then check out the code lab too. But for a easy, easy, busy way, you just download the zip from here and then just open it in Android Studio. So um, let me. So you already opened the code. Let me know if you want me to increase the font size or if it's okay, I will continue with that. But in the meantime, I will just run the application to actually see how this app is working. Now it would be helpful if we can increase the font size a bit. Okay, I will do that. So this is basically the application. It has uh, it is using the navigation component to switch between multiple fragments. So this is the main fragment. This is the statics fragments. This is the navigation drawer. And when you switch to task list, there are two menu options. You can filter the task list here. So, and then there is a menu where you can say clear the completed and refresh the list. And then there is another one for <clears throat> adding new tasks. So if you want to add something and then see here, it will just call the refresh and show the snack bar and you can edit the other link or if you, you can mark it as a done and then just uh, like a filter the list. So this is how actually basically app behaves. So this is what you basically gonna do with the core lab. Uh, like the application, how application works. This is, I just explained like overflow menu and what are the options are there. And this is basically the app architecture, which is basically the recommended for the moment by the team, Android team. So we have a task activity, task fragments, then there is a view model, then there is a repository, one for, and then we have a data source. One is local data source and the remote. So remote is responsible for loading data from network and local is responsible for handling room room which is like a, a wrapper over a sqlite so it helps as, or as a developers uh, providing a better way to in like you don't need to write complex queries or creating everything by your hand it provides a lot of uh, concise way to actually access the local database and then i just explained it uses the navigation component then it has different screens and layouts in xml so this is basically the structure of the project. So if you see here, this is the structure of your project. It has a folder for each component, like add or edit task, then data, which is having source, like local remote that I just explained. Then it has task data source interface, repository, and then default task repository. And then it has a result. It's kind of a wrapper over a result like to provide in a different states of to the UI based on the result if it's success, error, or you are loading data. And then task class for representing the uh, object of task. And then we have statics, then task details, and then task activity adapter, because this is by uh, a started cycler view, I guess. So that's why we have adapter here. And then we have task view model. And you, you will see we have a multiple, uh, like each component has its own view models here. And then in the application. So just a little bit text, I will explain it here. So they extend the application and they what they're basically doing is here, like actually they're using the library called Timber. It's basically for uh, logging your events and it's more uh, helpful than like, I, I, ne I never use it too much, but I found it really useful because when you want to log something, you don't need to provide a, like a create a tag by yourself. It will automatically refer the class name as a tag. And then you can throw your message into the, whatever method you want to like uh, log, like if you want to uh, uh, log errors or verbs or debug, whatever. So they just, this line is doing is like, whenever the build config is debug, so 
if you are in build variant you can select there are two options debug or release so they are making sure like if the debug the, the more of the build is in debug then plant the debug tree for uh, for logging and then they have a service locator this is basically because in this lab we are not using dependency injection like a hilt or a dagger or coin but here they are basically using a service locator to provide different uh, objects or dependencies to view models or wherever they want so in this case if you see it provides task repository then create repository these are the the creation of all these components is private if you see here and then they are just using these component like uh, methods to get the dependencies and this visible for testing annotation is to just to expose this function for testing purpose out of its uh, current scope and i think we will see where it's used and this is the this is the run blocking which is actually we can use in our production code too but it's not recommended because run blocking means you are blocking your current thread so if you are working in android application that means you are most of the time you are on the main thread which is like your rendering happens most of the time ui ui interactions and all that things are on main thread so whenever you try to achieve something like a synchronized make sure you are going by that uh, that it doesn't froze the ui or your application okay and you can check the nav graph it like there are like this is a fragments there like the connections so the third step is introduction to review of testing coroutines so what coroutines are like as i told it's a it's the basically how our program behaves or executes so either synchronized like you have 10 core lines of code and they are each line executes uh step in step by step order like one first line second or three something like that and here if you see there this diagram it explains pretty well like how actually different difference what's the difference between synchronized and asynchronized so in synchronized the it basically executes the program as it's written or as it's uh, like if there are three functions for example we have three tasks a b c as you are trying to achieve those tasks you follow that order and you cannot switch back and forth so a b then c but in synchronous behavior it's basically like you there is a behavior which can be synchronized so there is no any kind of uh, uh, like uh, no dependencies but if there are dependencies that you might need to like follow the synchronized pattern but otherwise you have a like a freedom of doing something which is not actually required at the moment but you start like the processing of something and you know that you need that result later on and coroutines with the help of view models observers pro help us to actually achieve that kind of functionality so we just throw the task a b and c all together and there might be a or c synchronous and then the b task here is basically uh, asynchronous so what that means is like we tell to the like um, like uh, that's our strategy like we started something in task b but that the output of that function or process is not available right away so whenever it's available we use some sort of uh, combination of view models and live data to actually get the updates from that process so as i just mentioned it's a synchronous code basically it's a non-deterministic behavior like you don't know when that gonna be happened so so you might see like whenever you want to test these kind of functions or uh, programs every time you run you you end up with a different output like output might be the same but there is a behavior different like you know you don't know the actual behavior like if you are expecting that this function will take like for example three seconds but you are not sure like maybe in the first time it just result you get the result in less than three and then next time it might take more than that so here that's what they actually trying to say like if a will finish first and b sometimes b so they both are not dependent and you are we are doing the asynchronously so we don't know like which one going to be finished at what point of time so 
how are we going to test test these kind of behaviors so in production or like in actual code we have a synchronous code but when we try to test these kind of functions or this kind of um, um, uh, programs for like for the testing purpose we need to like somehow like uh, create a behavior or a, actually the environment where actually everything gonna be behave like uh, pro in synchronized way so whenever we run a b or c we know that actually what we are going to expecting from that function and the behavior is like whatever is that function is doing it will be behave like as a synchronized but actually it is synchronous so this is basically synchronization test thread so you see like every time whatever you are, we are doing it's basically operations it has a synchronous operations but when we have as a searching asserting the results or expecting to verify the outputs we know that every time we will end up at the same point it doesn't matter if there are all those components are asynchronous or synchronous so next so we will see you like I, in the coming steps they explained like what to use what not to so there is a run blocking test which is basically a specifically recommended for run blocking test and then there is a test coroutine dispatcher for local test we will see why we need that one so step one is observe how to run the basic coroutines in test so this is if you downloaded the code don't update any dependencies because it might create some kind of issues so i will just keep that as it is when i downloaded the project so you need to add the your apps build.gradle file i actually opened the solution code here another one so it's in the app module if you see in this build file so there is a coroutines version for android test implementation so this is basically the dependency required if you want to test coroutines in your applications and when we are android in front of like when we use this version of adding dependencies that means we are we try to expose or we want to use these dependencies with our android tests like the instrumentation tests and when we just want to test uh, like for example unit tests in case for example for uh, for a view models or any other things that are not interacting with the android framework at all you can just use the test implementation for of that same library so here if, if you see we have android test implementation and then we have test implementation for coroutines so as i told you like this is a recommended to use run blocking test and why they actually want us to use the run blocking test is should be here so run blocking test it what it does is it like it skips the delay functions if you see here it skips any calls to the delay and it it executes or runs the code immediately whatever is that coroutines contains so delay is basically the it's basically if you are familiar with java we have thread dot sleep so this is basically the sleep version of uh, if it's a version of basically our thread dot sleep version in kotlin so you can call delays in your function so if you have any function that has a delay in there and you want to test that and you are using the run blocking test it will skip all those calls and run immediately all the code and it also provides another features like we can resume and pause or dispatch or coroutines at some specific time and to test the behavior so i will look, we will see this test so it's a task detail fragment test so they are talking about take a look at this example display in gui so they are talking about this example here so here what we do is like we create the model for a task like we create an item called active task then we call the repository dot save task 
so if you see here this little icon like a pause or play I pause icon in like a music one so that means like it's showing like this function is a suspend function that is like you cannot call like out of uh, any other coroutine you can only call suspend functions within any coroutines and run blocking test is basically providing that scope so if you see here it basically providing as a test coroutine scope to test this function uh, this behavior so when we uh, wrap all the implementation here with the run blocking test every statement from here onwards from line one will execute in a order and synchronized behavior so although this function is suspend function let me uh, so you see this is the suspend function but it will behave as like an, with not a suspend function like it will finish then the next steps will be executed like then the line number 68 then like uh, moving forward and then it will test all the all the things so if i click on that and we'll run this so this is recommended like whenever you are testing any code which like you want to like there is a suspend functions that are going to be called when you try to test your uh, application then you need to make sure that you're wrapping them with run blocking test to actually expire then you can only able to make sure that you are actually achieving the same expected behavior every time you run your test and it's really helpful when you have integrating this your test run on every build for example, whenever you make new build for your application and your CI CD pipelines also run these tests, then it will be like a very helpful. Otherwise, you might end up with a flaky test that sometimes fails or sometimes fails just because of suspend functions in there. So you see one test pass. So this is because just because of run blocking test. If I don't if i'm using run blocking it will still pass but the thing is like there are features provided by this that are run, we are not using in this case but there are other functions or other test components that we are we will see later so experimental coroutines api because this is not uh, finalized because this is still in the experimental uh, stage and this is whenever you use the coroutines test just make sure you will get the lint warnings and you can simply add this annotation to your at class level or your function level as i explained to you because run blocking test it is used in above code because we are calling this function from repository which is save task and it's suspend function and it provides the synchronization mechanism so as as we discussed earlier like it will skip the delay calls and run everything in a synchronized way so we have like expected behavior what we are expecting from our uh, test case so the next step to here is observing the run blocking in test doubles so this is the another major difference run blocking is not a part of coroutines test library so this is actually available in codeline standard library so that's another major uh, difference between these two uh, these two versions of run blocking so we will open the fake repository and see the So which one is that observed task? Okay. Observed task here. So if you see here, we are using the run blocking version, not the run blocking test. And you can use that one, but again, if you need that, otherwise you can simply use the run blocking. But most of the time in test, they recommended that and here is the major difference that you can see like as i told it skips the delay calls and it gives you the time control this is the main feature like run blocking test provides it's the like you can control actually at some point you might want to resume or pause your coroutines dispatchers to actually see some like you might have assertions in between your tests like not every time you're gonna test at the end 
like as a this fun this value is equal to the expected result from that function so if you have that kind of testing behavior that you need to test in between some assertions like when we call the refresh there might be a loading so we want to make sure that the loading value is true at very first step and then when the refresh task is done then the loading value is false so those kind of behaviors cannot be tested with the help of unblocking test using those features like a uh, uh, time control over the coroutines and why fix test repositories using the unblocking because we are not actually testing here something if you see here this is the fake implementation so when you are testing something you would prefer run blocking test but here if you see this repository is used somewhere like whenever we call the repositories if you see the here so this repository is this one and here if you see we are creating the fake android test repository and then here we have run blocking so this is basically that we provided the implementation to the to for testing purpose like we provided the fake implementation of a repository to the android components so that's why this is basically kind of a same it's basically uh you can say like it's a production code but just we be only gonna use you know, your test cases not like actual actual codes so that's why we are using run blocking in the fake android to test repository and run blocking test when we actually test something so to, to quickly get the idea like when to use this one whenever you have any function annotated with test and you want to behave that as a synchronized you can use the run blocking test and like in all tests you should prefer run blocking test and for uh, for other cases you can use the run blocking to provide the synchronous behavior to your test components okay so that's basically how we can test the coroutines with the synchronized behavior this is the step two and so we cover the step three introduction to the testing what is next so coroutines and view models so if you have familiarity with the coroutines like all the coroutines they require a scope so that scope helps us to tie that coroutines to some scope like it to for example view models or activities or fragments and that helps us to cancel the coroutines at some point if we want and most of the time we don't want to cancel them manually so when you tied to tied coroutines like uh, coroutines to any scope and whenever that scope gets invalidated your all the coroutines also going to be like a, stop or cleared for example if you tie your active uh, coroutines to activity whenever your activity get destroyed the coroutines will automatically get cancelled whatever is active there and same for fragments and view models and if if you want to use the the ktx versions like the android ktx library they provide a couple of extension functions that you can use for example view model scope dot launch and uh, view life cycle owner dot life score cycle dot scope something like that in fragments or activity as they mentioned here to avoid these like a man, you don't want to create a manually coroutine scope like if you have 10 coroutines and you are using like in multiple places then you need to provide scope manually but to remove like to avoid this kind of boilerplate code you can use the life cycle ktx which provide this function for a view model so that you can tie your coroutines to the view model scope and whenever the on cleared is called the scope is cancelled and everything is gonna be the as you can get also cancelled if, if, if it's coroutines or whatever is like attached to this scope and the, another main thing whenever you have view model you are using the view model scope the by default dispatcher it's the main dispatcher so by main here we mean is like the main thread so whatever you are doing is not going to be automatically switched to any other thread so if you are doing heavy kind of calculation and you think like when you tie select like view model scope dot launch and you are doing something you need to be careful to actually uh, managing the dispatches by yourself because by default view model scope is having dispatches dot main and it uses the androids 
looper.get main looper which provides the access to the main thread so you need to be very careful when you try to do some kind of uh, heavy tasks or api calls to make sure you are not using like you are not doing something which is taking a lot of resources on the main thread otherwise you might face anrs or any kind of freezing screens or frozen screens and uh, like a very it will be a, like a lot of penalties in terms of uh, performance of your application so but you can see like there are libraries like retrofit and some other libraries that sports like even the room sports the coroutines so they will automatically handle the dispatchers and thread switching for you so another issue when you want to test your view model and you are using the view model scope.launch and something happening in there then you in the testing you don't have access to this thing like looper.get main looper because this is provided by the androids framework so for testing your view models we need to somehow provide our dispatchers they are going to replace the dispatchers like the main dispatcher with the kind of dispatcher that is not from android framework so that's the point where the test coroutine dispatcher comes into the scene it provides us the dispatcher for testing view models and it basically helps us to set the main dispatcher for a test so we will see how we're gonna do that so task view model test so we go here okay so right now we didn't set up the dispatcher so if i try to run this i hope it will fail let's see if it fails or but no so i think i already have that code which is working so let me check if i have oh i think i added the rule here yeah this is this is this comes later into the scene so if you see now it our test is failing and we will see why it's failing and if you see the error it might not be that much visible but it says like modules with the main dispatcher had failed to initialize for testing dispatches dot set main from can be used so it provides an exact information like why this test is failing and how we can fix it so that's what they are explaining here so when i run that test it fails and why it fails because it tries to load that dispatches dot main which is provided by looper dot get main looper and we don't have access to that in our test cases then we can use the test coroutines dispatcher actually to provide the main dispatcher for our testing purpose so we covered this one so our test is failing for because we don't provide the main dispatcher here so as i just explained there there is basically this the error message tells you to set main from that like from the core test coroutine test so replace dispatches dot main with so this is the step actually we need to do like we need to replace the dispatches dot main with test coroutine dispatcher so we need to add there are three steps to, to replace the main dispatcher so we will first add the test dispatcher and then we need to add some coding after and before methods i will explain why that needs so this is required so we need to have the test dispatcher we initialize that here then we're gonna set the dispatches dot set main so the when we annotate the function with before that means like it will run before every test so before every test actually starts executed execution uh, its execution it will set the dispatches to the test dispatcher and it will basically setting the main dispatches for our application or uh, for our component that we are want to test and this is basically the function here after means like after every fun every test and what we are doing here is like we reset the dispatcher and then clean up 
any coroutines that are attached to that dispatcher. So if I run the same test, like uh, again, it will pass because we are setting the test dispatcher. You see all the tests three of three will pass because we now have uh, provided the exact right dispatcher for testing, which is provided from the coroutines test library. So the next step is it's basically really, um, really important one. So for example, right now we are, we are like playing with the code lab that is a very little, like I can say just a two or three unit tests for view models, right? But in actually when you are at job or when you are working for some big companies, there might be a hundred of classes that you need to test. And they, if they all have coroutines and then you need to write every time before and after method and make sure you reset the dispatches, you set the main dispatch, it's really annoying in the, those cases. So how we can actually avoid that kind of code, even it also leads to the code duplication in every test, right? So how we can do that in this, in this step, they provide us a uh, like a way to create a rule. So what is rule basically we in uh, unit testing in the J unit, we, when we provide the rules that helps, uh, like it will kind of, uh, it will attach certain conditions and if to the your test and when we here we have the main coroutine rule so if you see here in the code we set the dispatch it has a dispatcher which is called uh, by default we set it to the test coroutine dispatcher and then we have uh, when we override the test it's basically a test watcher and when we implement that there are two functions so this starting and finish you can say like uh, they will be behave like after and before methods so every time start will run every time before will uh, after will run after the end of the test so what we do is like whenever we start a test we make sure that dispatches dot set main to the dispatcher which is we defined a default to the test coroutines dispatcher and then in the end we we are doing the same thing that we are doing in the after method but now if we have multiple classes, we don't need to add after and like in the after section or the before section, these lines again and again, like dispatches dot set main, then set reset the main and then clean up the coroutines. So this is basically just the explanation that I just uh, told you, like it's extended, which implements the root test rule interface. And these methods, they match whatever we have written in the before and after, and it implements the scope. So we will see how we can use this. So use your, this is basically where we have just defined the J unit rule. So how we can actually in, integrate that rule in our lab, uh, in our test. So before that rule, we need this much code, like these number of chunks of piece of code in every test, every class, like every view model or whatever test is there. So that will be replaced with just basically uh, one or two lines. So if I go here, I think, yeah, I already have here. So now we don't need the test dispatcher here because we already provided the default. So we don't need to call the dispatches dot set main. And we don't need to reset here because that rule is providing us all, all of this functionality under the hood to us. So now our tests are still passing, but now with the with the lot of uh, we don't need a lot of uh, boilerplate code here. So this is how actually we can use the test rules like J unit rules to avoid the duplications, and it helps us to write more concise code in, even in uh, case of tests. And we just finished that one; it runs as expected. And the next step is like uh, using the main coroutine rule for repository testing. So if you have done the previous code lab, you might be familiar with the, about the uh, dependency injections, but because that helps us to replace the production version of classes. So, but here we don't have that dependency injection. So if you see the default, we have fake repository implementation. So we are using that version of repo. So wherever we need dependencies, we provide the fake dependencies. So here, if you see our default task repository, it requires basically uh, three things, but uh, 
you can like we have dispatches already as a default value but for task data source we have remote and we have local data source so we need to provide the implementation or you can provide the mocks but it again it depends how you want to test or how deep you want to go with your test so we will see how we can use the main coroutines so the bug code injects a local and remote as well as this because the dispatcher is injected you can use this so what they actually want us to do is like they don't want us to hard code this dispatcher although we because we have set this we can override it right because we just set the default value so if we don't want to provide any dispatcher it will use the dispatches.io but in case of testing it helps us to provide the dispatchers any other dispatcher if we want to so we will go to the default repository testing class so i'll open that so they want us to add that role in this class so i will copy this code yep so we have main coroutine role okay so So they, as they have this to do, they want us to replace that. So I think here we can say main quote in role dot. Let's make sure I'm doing it the right way. So use this instead of unconfined when defining your repository and test similar to this, executes task in it, but it doesn't include all of the testing benefits. So this is basically available in, it's not from the testing library. So if you want to, like as I explained earlier, there are more features in the testing. So they basically want us to replace the this the uh, here, not with the dispatcher of the main coroutine, but it's fine if you want to do that. But they actually want us to set it to dispatches dot. Even this is not from the testing, but because we provided the rule here, main coroutine role. So whenever it tries to access the main dispatcher, this will be provided by the main coroutine role. And that is from the testing. You see here in the above code, remember that it swaps the dispatcher dot main for a test coroutine dispatcher. So the again this is the again the major important thing here is like whenever we are calling the run blocking test it creates a new test coroutine dispatcher so if we are not def defining or we are not specifying one if you have five tests it will they and you have using the run blocking test they all create their own test coroutines dispatchers but main coroutine rule that we just added it also includes this, its dispatcher so if you see the main coroutine rule here you see it it also has it it's a dispatcher here so what we can do is like rather than directly calling the run blocking test in our tests we can use that main coroutine rule and what it do is like now every time if you have more tests in your case like i think here we have only one test so if you have uh, multiple tests but rather because that's going to be a costly process if we create test coroutine dispatcher every time so you can use that rule everywhere wherever you want to test your stuff in your uh, in your test uh, tests so instead of just using of run blocking test call the run blocking test on your main coroutine role and it will make sure that you are we are using the same dispatcher for all the tests this is basically just what we have did here and if you run here, everything's supposed to be working. So let's make sure. Yeah, so we have one test and it passes. We have run blocking task because the repository, this, this function is a get tasks is a suspend function. And we just making sure that it's data is equal to remote tasks and remote tasks we have defined here. It has this. 
So this is basically how we can use the test coroutine dispatcher to swap the main dispatcher in our Android in our test. And another thing is like it helps us to reduce the cost of creating test dispatchers every time we are using run blocking test with the help of writing coroutines rule. And you can basically, if you have your projects, you can simply grab this main coroutine role and dump it into your test project or in folder and then use that in your tests and then just write your test and make sure you just extend the, like you call run blocking test on that rule, not just uh, directly using that. So this is the main feature of why, um, like why Android team or why we are actually prefer to use the test coroutines dispatcher like uh, run blocking test instead of uh, run blocking in our test cases. Just a sec. Okay. So if you want to control the execution of your coroutine, then in the case of testing, we have access we can, we have a, a freedom of pausing the dispatchers or resuming them at any, any point in doing the testing. And these are the functions. They are available from test coroutine dispatcher. So we will see how we can use, I think that's they want us to do in this, uh, in this call uh, step. So what they want us to do is like, they want us to open the statics view model and they want us to change this with uh, this. Okay, so they want us to state view model. Oh, it's a statics, I guess. Yeah. So this is currently basically the basically whatever we get from the code lab. So what they want us to do is like, so now if you want to test this this view model as it is really challenging because it's accessing the application, and the application comes from the Android framework. So you need to actually write a code which also have access to Android framework. So whenever you have your uh, want to uh, test your view models you should consider using the view model rather than the Android view model if you don't want to uh, come like uh, integrate Android framework components with your view models. So we will just take this out. We will remove this and we will provide a, okay. So now this is basically in the constructor, we will provide the repository, uh, like the object of repository to our view model. So in this case, we can provide uh, any implementation. So in a production code, you will provide the actual implementation. In other cases, you can provide the fake implementation of your repository. So in this way, we will be, we can easily test our view model. Okay, so now we have that. At the bottom of this view model failure, there are, that takes a plain task reverse three. So, so what they want us to do here is we will copy that. They want us to update the view model factory, which provides the object of view model. Then we integrate, then we try to access those inner fragments. So, where they want us to have that fail outside the class. Okay. So, outside the class. So we need to add the view model factory. So what it does is like it, this function, this factory, it will take the repository as a object and it will provide us the view model for our class, for our, for our fragments. So now if we go to the statics fragment, okay, so where we are initializing our view model. Okay, so here, 
So now we need to update the view model because it now taking the repository as a as a parameter. So you can use the it's gonna be the same, but rather than just closing the brackets here, it needs the factory that we have just created in our view model class. So now all good. So this is the factory that we have just added. So we give the repository to that factory and it generates the view model for us. Okay, so we are we are good and we I think the next step will be the testing. So they want us to create this test. I think I have it already here somewhere. Okay, no. So when you hit the option enter on your class, I'm using Mac, so it's option enter. I, I'm not sure what's in the windows. So there is an option called create test. So J unit three or four, I guess four, let's do with that. Destination package. We will, if you want to set up before and after, and there are a couple of methods. So I will not add everything, but you can, if you want to test everything, you can just check them all. But for the moment, it should be in Android. It should not be in Android test. It should be under the test because this is going to be a unit test. So now we have our test here. And now they want us to do like add the inst instant task executor role. This will swap the background executor used by components to for for an executor which will execute task and this ensures that's a deterministic. So we need to add the instant task executor role because we have the live data and we are uh, doing a lot of stuff uh, synchronously to provide the synchronous behavior. We need to add this rule in our test. If you already see the existing view model test, we already have that rule. Then we need to add the main coroutine rule, then create a fields for view model and test doubles for, if you're familiar with the doubles and mocks, you can see, you will see how, like you can provide the dependencies to our view model. So I will just create this. I will just take the code from there and just dump it here. Just too easy, easy, a little bit easy for us. So once you grab the code, it will automatically import for everything. But if if there is something missing, you just hit option enter and you will see the options that you can import. So we added the main coroutine rule. We added the instant task executor rule. Now we have, this is the subject under test, which is our statics view model. This is the fake repository which is which we are going to use in this case for testing and this is like uh, this extends the task repository uh, implements the task repository okay so so this is the way like if you are not using the dependency injection you can like you can provide the like in that case, you don't need to like provide manually, but you can just inject these things. But here we don't. We are we are we need to do the like manually inject that uh, like a create object. So we initialize the repository, and you see here the difference. We are providing the actually a fake implementation of our real uh, repository, and now whatever functions are using like a, a static view model is calling on this repository will be referring to the functions that are implemented or existing in this fake repository. Okay, so now we will uh, do the test for loading indicator. So here, what we do is like, as you know, when we refresh the task, if you see in the app, I guess we have app running here somewhere. Okay, so. Okay, this is the application. So you see this loading icon here, so it loads the, tasks for us so they want actually us to test that behavior and this is not the ui behavior actually we are testing we are testing the values for that loading so this is the field in the data loading it's existing in the it's a it's a, in the static view model and we want to test the refresh function so i will grab the function test for that and i will explain you how that works okay so get a weight And these are all the dependencies are there for, uh, and you need to import the 
and crest core matches. The dependencies are over there. You just need to make sure that imports are resolved to the appropriate ones. So what we are doing is here, like we call the refresh function on statics view model. And if you see here, it sets the value to true, then it launched the suspend. This is the suspend function. And this is the value after loading the refresh task for us. But if we run this test right away now, it will fail because of the synchronous behavior of our refresh function in statics view model. So you see here why it fails because we call the refresh and then we immediately want to test both the values at same time. So we are, we are assuming that at this point, this value should be true. And the next moment it should be false, but actually it is something if you see actual implementation of this function, it is basically first it's true, then refresh the task, then it's false. So how are we gonna actually fix this? So this is the say like copy, we just dump the code, import the handcrest, and doesn't really make sense because it's testing both true and false that I just explained at the same time. And And uh, because we are using the test coroutine dispatcher, so our functions basically finished actually before hitting the last assertion. So it fails at the first assertion that we have like a true for our data loading. So how are we gonna fix that? Let's check. So this is basically how we want to do. So when we setting the value that I just explained, like we need to check here, like actually the data loading value is true. And once we have done with the refresh task, we have the false and then we have to check here. but why they added the co comments here because they they are just explaining us where we actually need to test the value of the loading indicator so there it comes to the scene like because if you see we are not asserting everything at the end of our test if you see here uh, in the test we are not testing now everything at the end like we first call this now we will we will test true we need to pose the pose the our dispatcher when we call the refresh. And then after that, we need to resume our dispatcher and then we verify the value is false. So we will see how we're gonna do that. So as you see here, they want to pose the execution, then make sure that the loading value at that point when we pose our dispatcher is true. And then after that, once this done, we make sure that our dispatcher is like our value is that. So this is the final code for that one. So let me just take that code here. So now what they do is like on the rule, we just call the post dispatcher and we call the refresh method. And if you see here at that point, now we are, we our dispatcher is posed at this point. So we can test that value because at this point, this is true because refresh is, that's what we that's what the actually value when we call the refresh method so at this point this is here so we have true here and then execute the pending actions so then after asserting that true now we resume the dispatcher and it will ex execute the refresh functions uh, other components like refreshing the tasks and setting the value to false and then you can test the value to the false and if we run this again it will pass you see now the test is passed because of now we are posing the dispatcher at right time and at that point the value is set to the true for the data loading indicator so these are the basically just two major functions like you can pose the dispatcher you can resume the dispatcher but there are other functions like advance the time you can advance the time you can uh, uh, there are a couple of other options that you can check the documentation online and use accordingly, whichever is like suitable for your test case or required. Okay, so the next one is like uh, testing error handling. So most of the time we, so far, if you see the test cases, we have only added the, we have tested the happy path. Happy path means like, everything goes smooth like we loaded the data we have data and we are testing everything is 
as expected but there might be a certain cases when you want to for example you want to load data from root database and you are expecting a list of elements but if it, there is nothing exists then that means there you want to to show error like there is no data available or if there is something went wrong you throw some kind of exceptions so how we can test those kind of scenarios in this case we in this step we will see that how we can actually implement the unhappy part of our of our core so basically how are we gonna deal, deal with that we need to add some kind of boolean flags into our fake repository implementation to that so if you see here they added the should return uh, should return error to the by default set it to the false and uh, it's in a fake test repository let me check if that code is actually there test repository so it looks like it's not there so let me add that so they want us to open the fake repository then we need they want us to add the should return boolean here and then create a set return function and what this function basically does is like it just update the value of should return error so basically we manually tell to the basically using the this this flag to return or like modify the returns of our functions based on that value so we will see how actually we're going to use that so they said like wrap the get task and task uh, in if statements so if, if this is true the method result the result to error so we have these two functions avoid import conflicts okay so they want us to override these like uh, replace these two with that and i will just make sure that the imports are correct okay so now you see here like whenever we try to get the task like when we call the get task the result might be a error right you never know so if we have the flag set to true we will throw the error otherwise we return the task or at the end is again error but our, our function more probably will end here or here so it will never basically reach here same for the get task like when we want to reserve a list of tasks we use same thing here we added the flag and so now we will they want us to add a test for return error so statics view model it has that okay so this is basically the code of uh, code for the code for the error states and empty states for the tasks like then we get the results and we see if there is a any error or if it's the it's the success case so they want us to test here they want us to test the error state here this one so what they want us to do is like to take this code in statics view model test i think it should be open somewhere here statics view model test okay so now you see here we call the set return before actually calling anything and before actually testing anything so it says like load statics when load statics when tasks are unavailable call error to display okay so now if you see we are actually testing the error states of the functions of the view model so we set the error and then we call the refresh method on here it calls the refresh tasks which is here and if you see the implementation of of the fake android repository it's not that one it's this one so it actually end up here on the error cases in both the both the functions whichever is called from the called from the view model and based on that it will it will uh, we will test the 
error case or the empty case. So let's run this test and see if it passed or failed. Okay, test. Okay, so we just run this test. So when we call the statics view model dot refresh, we have task repository dot refresh dot. Okay, let's see the implementation. So this is the implementation in the fake repository. So what it basically do is like it just update the value of the observable task here and it calls to the get task and get task is basically this one if it's error that we just called here here so we set the error we call the refresh it calls the ob, uh, ob repository and the repository calls the get tasks and based on that we have these two values that are expected to be true based on that let me just close this so just have a fake android test we can close that for the moment so this is basically get tasks is called it's a call get called when we call the repository and this is like a refresh tasks refresh tasks refresh tasks this is the method which is called when we hit the refresh and it calls to a get task and that returns the mess like it expects the result to be mutable live data of result of type which is containing the list but in our case we don't have because we set the error so we don't have data so this is how you can test that the error cases by adding some sort of boolean flag that you can set and return the return the data based of that flag okay so yeah this is how you can test the error cases and the next step is step number seven which is testing room so this is important if you have a um, room database integrated in your application i think here we have dev one in our application and uh, app inspection i guess uh, let me run the application i think that should be somewhere here yeah so this is another important feature of Android ID. So if you have a local database, you can have an inspector, like you go to the app inspection, then there are a couple of inspectors. So you select the by default, this is the uh, selected one, which is database inspector, and you can check the databases for your application. So we have task table, we have the master table. So basically we are here. So right now we have two entries. So you can basically play with this. And if you see here, Okay, I marked the other one as a done. Oh, live updates. Okay, so you see the values updated one to set to be completed. I think we can, if we can change that. And it's updated. So you can actually see the live updates to the database also. So this is one of the really cool features of IDE itself. But we, gonna do the testing so they want us to add the architecture component testing library to your instrumented test using this so they want us to add the core testing library so let me check if it's not there okay so yeah, one, if you downloaded the code, it's already there. I think it should be, but they want, uh, I guess, um, for Android. Now we need it for Android ones because we want to test the room database. So let's set that dependency here. And you need to sync your project. Let's it sync and Create the tasks, tau test class, create this class. OK. 
okay well let me check if it's there already or not so this is android test we have data dot source so they want under local and then create task tau test okay so here if you go into that data dot source under the android test package you need they want us to create a new package they want us to call it local and they want us to create a task tau task class you can just copy and this is really also cool feature you just wherever you want to dump that code just go over that package and hit command v and it will import and fix everything for you we need to import it uh, i guess this one yeah okay so we have that test class created for a task DAO. we have added the instant task executor rule so execute each task synchronously using the architecture components like live data or some other components so we have added the three annotations experimental proteins that we already saw in the other tests run with android j unit 4 this is the base class for running the android x test and the small test there are three different versions like medium test and large test you can read more about like you can do it by yourself so let's see how we're gonna do the testing of our database so we want to add a layer in it to the database and then we want to add that before let me quickly add the code first and then i will explain you guys how we can test our databases so here we are like this is the method basically the before like when before we run a test any test it will initialize that database so when we are if you see in the in the first i guess first step we explained why we, we are going to use this in memory database builder so this provides the like the dummy database where you can like uh, perform the testing for your application for your database of your application in our case which is to do database so this is just for testing purpose not like the real database for your application and whenever you do the testing you make sure like in after you just close the connection to your database which is here so we have just done this we have initialized our database so this is the main feature like uh, why we need to use in memory because we want we don't want to store this information in our application so once your test is done and the process is killed for your testing all the data is gone and there is no any data information is saved for your database whichever is you are like like in simple terms you can say like the interactions from here doesn't impact uh, your database at all okay so they want us to do task for in survey they here want us to insert us can get by id so there they want us to make sure that when we try to perform insertion operation in our databases that that operation flow like happened successfully and then how we can verify that we insert and then we load the data from the database and we will check like if that task is already existing in our database or not so let's import this okay this is impressed yep and get task by id so yeah you make just make sure that you import this like is not null value all from impressed and these are from junit and yep so let's see how we are what we are doing here so because we are testing so we are using an unblocking test here and then we we are inserting we created the task object we access that DAO and DAO is basically data accessible object for our database 
and we have insert task function on here if you go there you see here it takes the task and insert into the database and we can define the policy like if there is already existing one just replace that so we insert the database so when get the task by id so now we have already insert now we need to make sure that is existing so we call the get task by id this task we have created we give the id and this is the case here like where entry id is equal to task id so if we run this task it should work yeah so our test is passed so that means like whenever we are inserting it have like it it works as expected and then we are accessing that task and it behaves as expected and insertion is successful. here we actually tested the two cases for our database like first is insertion and then second is accessing the data from our database okay so yeah if you see for your to making your life easier they provided all the imports that are required for for this test So next thing, this I I will skip this. So you can next test the update function of your database. So if already task is there, so if you see uh, before here in the I guess. So this is basically the update to the existing task. So whenever you do any changes to your data here, it will in the background it just triggers the modification like the update to your database so you will need to do this by yourself and there are three tools like insert a task update the task and and then the accessing that and make sure that the updates are there so this is you gonna do by yourself okay so step six is creating an integration test for task local data source okay you just created a test for DAO. next you will create integration test okay so they want us to test our local data source so let's see where is that i think we don't have the test there yet so let's see the class first So they want us to test this class now. So what this do is like it takes the DAO, it takes the dispatcher, which is now here by default to the IO. What it do is like it takes the result. If you see here, we give it the access to our database. So whatever result it gets from the database, it maps it to the results in form of result. If it's a success, it maps. If you see here, it maps to the success here same success and these are the functions that are not yet uh, implemented and same here so it's basically a kind of you can say wrapper over accessing the database to, like you should like have a, if you want to manipulate the data return from your database you can create a task local data like any kind of for in this case this is task local data but it can be any any data uh, any name for your class so let's create a test for this we call that and this should go under android test because it's uh, interacting with android components for example room database so we'll create that test and here it is okay so i will take that just for uh, Again, copy pasting. Okay. Everything resolved. This is from this. Okay. So instant task executor rule is again required because of we need a synchronized behavior. And now this has medium test, uh, and you can read about those annotations by yourself. So they want us to add these two here because our local data source needs a DAO and to access that DAO we need a database and 
that's why we added here a database property. So we will see later how we're gonna use that. So now they want us to do this, like create a before function, then we need to create a database because otherwise we are not able to access the data access object of our database. So this is basically what we are doing here. We are using the in-memory database again because we want to test and then we pass that database and then we pass the dispatcher as a main because we want everything to be behave synchronized in our tests. Okay, oops, I just uh, missed the method entire. And uh, you need the after function just to make sure that you close the resources, things like databases and all that. So we created the database. We have now the data source ready. Now we will see what they want us to test. So they want to test save task and retrieve. So this is basically going to be a interaction with the DAO. Like uh, first we insert the task and then we get the task and we will see if the result is as expected or not. Let's take that code. Okay, run blocking. So here they are using the run blocking, but you should always prefer run blocking test. So here we created the new task, then on the local data source, we call the save task. And if you see, it calls the insert task on our database access object. And when the, then we will uh, retrieve the task and then we assert that the, the result is what we are uh, expecting from our database. So let's run this test. So our test is passing. So yeah, it's behaving fast. Let, let's test if, uh, if there is any specific, if there is any kind of failure or not. I should, I, I should expect it should to be passed. Oh, so there is a, has not job completed yet. Yeah, so because here we are not adding the main coroutine rule that is going to help us with the dispatchers because that will provide us the, if you remember the from the previous test, we have the rule and using by using that rule, we get the, we get the disp dispatchers for a run blocking test. So that's why they are using the version here, which is run blocking. So if you want to use a run blocking test, make sure you, you are using the rule for uh, for the main coroutine rule here also you by uh, inc including this one and then using run blocking test with that so this is just the explanation of this test that i have just uh, uh, that we have uh, just covered it's basically a success case so next to, uh, here they want to like to you guys to do the another one by yourself, which is like writing test, complete task and retrieve task complete. So what you wanna do is like, you need to, first you need to save the task. Basically this is the step I will explain and you will implement later on by yourself. First create any task, insert that, then update the existing task. Maybe you can set its status to the completed. That will trigger the update to the database and then you will check the retrieve then you will retrieve that task from database and see if that is matching with your updates or not so this is basically three use cases going to be covered by this case so first one is like insertion then second is updation and the last one is like retrieving the information okay so I will skip this one. This is basically uh, related to the data bindings. So if you are familiar with the data bindings, like we have a, how we can use the data bindings for uh, probably, I guess, two-way data binding, like when we, you can bind the data from your uh, view models or your uh, data objects to the XML files. So how are you gonna test those kind of things? 
so for these things they want for the espresso test you need to turn off your animations and this is they explained here like how you can turn off the animations and then you can write the task for for your activities and you you can uh, do this by yourself and i will move to the final one which is end to end navigation testing of our application okay so by here i guess uh, the data binding they by here they by the data binding they means like actually setting the data to the ui not the data binding that i explained earlier sorry about that i guess that was what i understand by the data binding but here they are talking about like verifying information is matching to the ui components so you see here save the task to the repository then uh, you launch the task activities and click on the task on the list and verify that all the data is correct so this is what actually you're going to test is so you save the tasks in the ui you see here and when you tap on any of the data you will actually test this these things like the information about the task is actually available to the ui so this is going to be a pretty easy it's not uh, the data binding that i was thought of so i think it will be easy for you okay so next one is the end to end so when we are it's basically a navigation test so we are making sure like when you tap on the any task you are going to the task details activity when you tap on the back button of your uh, device you go back to the previous page or previous fragment or activity in your application so this is basically like how you you just want to make sure that the navigation navigation behavior of your application is also going to be tested not just the unit tests or activity tests are there but you will make sure that navigation is also works as expected so if you see here it's the nav we have a couple of components which uh, we are navigation drawer we have toolbar we have up button back button so let me show you the quickly so this is the up button here this is the back button this is the device back button and then you have the drawer so you will test they want to test the components like navigation so when we hit on here we land here when we hit study statistics we have land here and when we are here we hit back button we make sure that it just kills the app or just uh, or i guess here to make sure that we go back to the list of tasks same for the back button so when you are here you here you land here so they want to test this these kind of behaviors of our application okay let's go to the studio okay so they want us to create the app navigation test in android test folder so which is here not here not here directly under the main main package so we will create a new i guess caught in class okay so we have the appropriate annotations so i will copy this code because they are expected that we have completed the previous step for importing the proper resources so let's So yeah, this is another dependency that is needed for uh, for uh, for data binding idling resources because data binding now here they are talking about the data binding which is 
I'm talking about previously, which is like when you want to tie your data from directly with the XMLs from your view models or your other data objects. So we need to add that dependency for right link resources, which is done in here. Okay, turn off animations. You'll see here they want us to add this implementation for Express. So I hope it should be there, but somehow it looks like not. I think it should be Android test implementation, if I'm correct. It should be from Android test, but let's just follow that and see if it works. It's still no resolving, so it should be Android test implementation. No, because we need it to be implementation because we are actually adding this to the our production code. So I guess we might okay, so espresso version is there. Why it's not still resolving? Let's check. So they said in your application code. Okay, so let's check where they actually talking about idling resources. So we'll wait. Okay, you can use the idling resource synchronization, idling resources. So we have added these, also add these options. Yeah, these are the two options that I requires for for uh, testing when you want to integrate the ad link resources in your application. But this is still not resolving somehow. So let's try. So this is goes into your Android component. So it should be here somewhere. So we are, or you can just, uh, take this because we already have this value here so we will just take the second one and you can comment this okay so where we are now data binding i think they created another class for uh, they might have created a custom class. So let's see if they did something. Create an idling resource in under utils. Let's create first this class. So they want us to create one class in utils. So we will add that. Okay. Um, it allow you to implement and upgrade create an example here's an example of how would you use this so you can simplify this by creating this file in the file 
So the another thing they want us to do is this. So there is currently issue. Espresso does not work well with proteins. So they added the issue here. Okay, use this in default repository. Yeah, it's here. So we need to write the data binding handling resource. So this is the class they have written here. Okay, let's take that class. So it should be in utils and we have here. Yeah, Okay, okay, fragment. Okay, we are good. Fragment scenario, you don't own a fragment. Okay, so we are getting error at the last method. I think we might miss something. So it says sets a fragment for a scenario to be used for data binding scenario, this dot activity. School to third. Okay, let's see if we are using any. Okay, so this is somehow, I think, referring to the return issue. So let's. Uh, Required nothing found here. So I think it's some um, uh, messing up with this. It's not about the return. This is about something here. No, that's not the solution. So what they are doing here is. Let's for the moment import that and let's go to here and see if we can be able to run this. Okay, so we have this class defined. 
I will uh, skip that error message error step. But if you follow the step eight, it will lend to the final final step version of your uh, step nine. So they want us to copy these three test cases there. And we'll take those tests. Okay. So we are using the monitor activity. So I, I will comment this function for the moment because I guess we are not using it in the because we are not using in the navigation. So I will comment that out for the moment. And let's see if this test is working. So we will see how this works. So basically they want us to do these tests. Like these are the tests basically from the step eight, but here you just, they all will pass because we are not asserting anything. We are not uh, actually doing anything with the cases. So again, the st this is basically step eight or nine. I will leave on you guys to implement that test for this. And if you feel stuck at any point, you can check the solution code in number 10, but I will I, I would highly recommend you guys to do this because this is going to be very similar with the, with the UI testing of task activity. So, click on the list item, then edit, then they just define the steps and then you just follow these steps. And this is basically the same as a step number eight. And if you feel anywhere stuck, feel free to uh, check the solution code, but try it by yourself first. And uh, that's pretty much for this code lab. So if you want to see the solution code and want to get basic idea, you can directly grab from step number 10. And from here onwards, what we have covered in this code lab, what is the run blocking test, test coroutine dispatchers, view how we can uh, provide, use the test uh, coroutine dispatcher to swap the dispatcher of view model scope. What's the difference between run blocking test and run blocking test? And this is the last two steps like idling resources with the data binding that you're gonna do. And we test the data layer, which is like room database access object. Then we have test the local data source. Then how we can uh, like uh, simulate the behavior of errors in a case of if there is any kind of errors, how are we gonna do test those things in a test? So this is basic a uh, couple of things that we have covered i would suggest to you guys to like take a uh, time and go through this code lab again and if you find any issues feel free to ping us on twitter or linkedin and here are a couple of references that they provided for for to understand in depth what is navigation components work managers there are a couple of sample projects official testing sample espresso sunflower demo this is very good sample application so feel free to check that and the last is like this is where you can also continue with the another advanced core labs rated similar to these kind of labs that we have just did so yeah that's uh, pretty much from my side thank you everyone so let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you, such a great session. Yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to 
ping me on LinkedIn or Twitter, this is my handle. So, yeah, it was pretty lengthy, I can say. It's a new, con like a lot of new concepts. So I hope you guys have a little bit of understanding how these things work. So yeah, Sagar, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Sam. That was a great session. Just curious about uh, your experience writing uh, test cases in general. So uh, today's session was uh, really great. We learned a lot about like uh, how to write test cases and everything. So I'm curious about what you have to say, like, like job being an Android developer, we tend to write a lot of methods having a lot of like lines of code. Maybe we have like three different methods having 50 lines each. And let's say uh, we are making multiple network calls within one method. So what would be your suggestion how to break up test cases? And ideally, what should be the right number of test cases in order to ensure that our functionality is working fine what are what are some of your insights for that yeah so the first thing is that i can say like uh, before actually starting that like if you have a multiple calls like if you have multiple asynchronous methods in your single function from new model try to separate them if you can because that will easily help you to write a more robust test because then you have less dependencies or less uh Sync asynchronous stuff going on in a single method and if you are able to do that then you can simply follow the testing strategies according to that one right because then you have separate methods and you can write tests for each of those cases but if you have a, if you still have multiple case multiple uh, scenario like a multiple calls like you need to do like you don't have any other options like sometimes we need to have those kind of scenarios right we need to call multiple apis and then process accordingly so in those cases, the the option is like just run blocking because it will make sure that everything is like running in that case. And then for the test cases, I think it most of the time we might don't have queries in our and especially in mobile teams we don't have quality engineers like that are specifically writing tests for us, right? Then like it's mostly the developers like we see the specs and we get the help from the BU, BU or the like, business analysts to figure out like what are the possible scenarios. And then I guess from there onwards, you try to make sure that you cover as much as test case, like the scenarios with your test cases. Got it. Makes sense. That was helpful. Thanks. Yeah. No All right, do we have any other questions from the attendees? Okay. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Nav, for joining us tonight. And a reminder for all the attendees that we have a Boston Android Slack channel. In case you, uh, you have any burning questions which you would like to hit us up, so just send us a message on Slack. You can reach out to Nav, me, Beth, or Jen. We would love to help you out. And so the next session, let me see. Uh, yeah, so we take a one week break. So ideally there's no session on April 21st, but we do return on April 20th. And that session would be all about Jetpack Compose. So stay tuned for that. With that being said, let's wrap up for tonight. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Have Thank a nice you. evening. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much.